What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day, the postseason edition. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Max Scherzer, who had four Ks and five innings, giving up five hits and five runs. This was obviously Scherzer's first start back from the IL, and I expected him to be kind of rusty. And he definitely was, although his stuff wasn't terrible. And he certainly seemed like vintage Max on his march in from the bullpen. His spin rate and velo were about where they normally are, but he only picked up eight whiffs on the game. And his command definitely wasn't where it usually is. He picked up strikeouts on his fastballs, sliders, and curveballs. And I really liked this sequence from him. He had picked up a foul ball on an 85-mile-an-hour slider, which was low and out of the zone, and then followed it up with a fastball right over it that was taken for a backwards K. And you can see in this overlay how he tunneled those two pitches and why as a hitter, you'd take the fastball because you thought you were getting another slider that Max was trying to get you to chase. So instead, you take a fastball in the zone and you go down looking. I'll definitely say that home run that Altuve hit off Max was just a really good job of hitting. He threw that right about where he wanted to. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap to Altuve, who basically covers the zone from head to toe. Look at this hit he got off of a changeup later in the game. And I overlaid these two swings just so you can see how much ground Altuve covers. That's crazy. I did appreciate Max lobbying to stay in this game after the fifth. But in fairness, after giving up five runs, I probably agree with Bochi. And Max would probably lobby to stay in after giving up 20 runs. Max Scherzer was outdueled by Christian Javier, who had three Ks and five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs on three hits. Javier attacked with his usual mix of fastballs and sliders, and threw 54 fastballs yesterday, picking up seven whiffs on 32 swings. Javier's fastball looked really good. Both his spin and velo were up for the game, and he had very good command of his heater. His fastball has been dubbed an invisible because it's kind of an outlier in terms of vertical break, as you see in this chart from Codify. And that, combined with his arm action, allows him to live above the zone, even without plus velo. According to Sarah Langs, Javier has the lowest opponent batting average in any four-start span in postseason history. After the game, Javier said that he knew he had his best fastball, even when he was doing his throwing program before the game. Hey Christian, is there a point in the night, maybe in warm-ups or the first inning, where you realize you have like your good fastball going, your fastball is going to be good that night? Yeah, in throwing program I noticed I, I knew that my fastball was going to be good. Um, it was doing exactly what I wanted and, you know, even early on in the game I noticed it, it was really good. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Hector Neris had this fastball. John Gray made it back from his injury which was great to see. He wasn't perfectly sharp, but did pick up a K on this slider. And my filthiest reliever of the day was Ryan Presley. Check out this 3,503 RPM curveball from Presley. I put a tail on it so you can see how much drop this thing has. Amazingly, this is the only 3,500 RPM pitch in the entire season this year that was thrown by any pitcher other than Dustin May. And May only threw three pitches that were 3,500 RPMs or more this year. I overlaid this buzzsaw 3,500 RPM curveball with Presley's fastball. And you can see just how unfair a combination those are. Absolutely sick stuff from Ryan Presley. And now my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Check out this awesome parenting from this dad to his son. He tells his son, not with two strikes as his son is waving his towel around while Javier was pitching to Carter. Teach him young. Good job, Dad. What's up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start off with the same game parlay of Ranger Suarez and Brandon Fought, both for 4Ks or more. And then I'm going to top it off with Jose Arquiti for 3Ks or more. And of course, I'm going to add in my FanDuel 30% profit boost, which allows you to boost your profit by 30% for any same game parlay or same game parlay plus of three legs or more. What would your picks of the day be? 